What's up guys, thanks for checking out the video. I'm here with a set of front and rear fixed Subaru calibers. These are actually referred to as a four pot and two pot calibers. And the four pot is really referring to the fact that it has four individual pistons and it's a fixed caliber design. This fixed caliber design is actually a significant upgrade from the sliding caliber design that most Subarus come with from the factory. I bought all four of these calibers off of Craigslist and I'm gonna clean them up and at a later date, I'm gonna make an install video where I put these on my 1998 two-door coupe. But for now, I thought I'd throw the camera up and make this little video to give you guys an intro about why I bought these calibers and walk you guys through how I like to clean them. So thanks so much for watching, guys. I'm Luke, this is the Subaru Only Show. This is my little Subaru Only Shop. It's a DIY Subaru channel. It's a channel where all I do is Subaru builds and race Subaru vehicles and motorsport events. It's a DIY themed channel where I walk you guys through the steps to get your Subarus back on the road and hopefully do a little racing of your own. So thanks for checking out the video guys, I really appreciate it. The thing is, not only do these look awesome, is that they actually function a hell of a lot better than those factory sliding calibers. See the thing is that these fixed calibers are a completely different design than the sliding caliber. With a fixed caliber, as the name infers, the caliber actually doesn't move anywhere. So when you push down that brake pedal, that column of brake fluid actually is transmitted directly to those pistons and to the rotor. None of that pressure is lost to slide in the caliber like you have in a sliding caliber design. That's also why these fixed calibers give you a lot better brake pedal feel and a lot more feedback from the road surface. So every little bump and every little irregularity in that road surface or that track surface gets transmitted through that wheel into the rotor, through your brake system, into your brake pedal. That can make your driving experience a lot more enjoyable. That's also why you'll see people buy stainless steel brake lines because stainless steel brake lines actually don't expand as much like rubber lines do that you get from the OEM. And because those stainless steel brake lines don't expand, any little pulsations and pressure that the road surface transmits to the rotors and into the brake system gets transmitted directly to the brake pedal and none of it's getting absorbed by that rubber brake line coming off your caliber. And that leads to another product that's on the market, those master cylinder braces. Several manufacturers out there make those, and those stabilizers actually do the same thing. They help transmit all the fluctuations and pressure that happen from the road surface all the way back to the driver at the brake pedal. So anything that actually helps transmit all those little pressure fluctuations into the brake pedal would help things. A stiffer brake pedal, a brace on your master cylinder, replacing all those rubber lines with stainless steel lines, having fixed calibers instead of sliding calibers. All of these things have one thing in common is that they're helping transmit that pressure fluctuation that you get from the road surface and when you're braking all the way back to the driver at the brake pedal. So when I'm cleaning this sucker, I just get a bowl of hot water and soap. Dawn dish soap works really good. And then I get a little scotch Bright pad. I use a non-scratch type, that's the blue ones. And start to clean up all the dirt and debris and oil that's accumulated on those calibers over the years. It's a pretty straightforward process. There's nothing complicated about it. Just take your time and enjoy it. Maybe play a little music and go to it. I don't know about you guys, but I think this red is gonna look awesome on that World Rally Blue two-door coupe. So I'm definitely gonna be keeping these suckers red. And do I care that there's a couple little scratches on them? Hell no. I like keeping my shit clean. Keep my shit clean. But I don't mind if it's got scratches. I want it to be clean and I want it to function properly and be durable and not take any shortcuts. But I do not care about having scratches and having fading on any of my parts. As a matter of fact, I like to call it patina. That's the history of the part. Just chalk it up as patina. So anytime you're buying old parts or used parts, I highly suggest that you just clean the hell out of that part and take a good look at it and question whether or not you really want to go ahead and strip it down and repaint it or repowder coat it. Because a used part that's worn, that shows it's wear, but functions perfectly and is a high performance part, to me, might even be cooler than having it all redone and looking all brand new and glistening. It captures a little bit of the history of the part. You know, an expensive <laughs> collector part market, it's a provenance, right? I often tend to just clean up my old stuff and then run it as it is, as it was from the factory, just cleaned up. That's the other thing, this is a factory finish, you know, you sandblast this down and repowder coat it, it's not the factory finish again, even if it is clean and nice. Plus it's just going to get dirty again and scratched up again. Maybe that's why I don't care, because I have no interest in building anything and then not using it. Everything I build is to be used. And hopefully be flogged and <laughs> used hard. I don't know if you can hear all the birds out here. It is crazy. I guess we've had a lot of 
rain the last few days, and now hey, it's a nice sunny day here in Northern California. Where are you guys all from? I know we got a bunch of people checking these videos out from all over the world. It's pretty cool. Maybe drop a line in the comment section and uh, let me know where all you guys are from. It's kind of cool to see uh, how big the globe is and how small the Subaru community is, you know? It's pretty awesome. Yeah, these calibers are going to look dope. It's hot, soapy water, man. I guess 99% of it. I have the inlet for where the brake line is connected plugged, so you're not getting water inside the calibers. Don't want to do that. And I'm just working this little non-scratch pad to get all the little crevices. I'm just try to get the sucker clean. I actually just got these off Craigslist today, this morning. The four pots, they go on the front, the front calibers. And guess how much I got them for? I got them for, he was asking 250 and I just gave him his asking price, because that's basically a good price. That's basically what they go for on eBay. And then he offered to bring them down to me for another 20 and I was like, no problem. So I ended up paying 270 for them. And I think that's totally a fair price. I hope he was stoked, I think he was. He seemed stoked, and uh, I know I was. So it's a good deal for both of us. And uh, that's how much I paid for these. And then on these uh, rear calibers, these are the two pots, because they have two pistons, one on each side. I actually got these for 80 bucks. That's super steel. Got that off Craig Craigslist too. So 80 bucks for the rears and 270 for the fronts. That's 350 total for a full set of four pot, two pot, fixed calibers. It's not bad, it's a good price. It's probably better than I can find on eBay by a little bit. Not much, but a little bit. And these are in pretty good condition. Especially once they're all cleaned up. They're gonna look dope. They're gonna look real good. When you're cleaning these guys, let me wipe this down. Maybe I can zoom in later here in the post-production phase. When you clean these guys, all the surfaces where that caliber is going to bolt up, you want to make sure there's no debris built up in there, so it's got to have a nice clean surface. A lot of cleaning with soapy water is just letting the soapy water soak in to the brake dust and all the stained areas. It's not going to come off on the first swipe. Kind of got to just keep like getting that soapy water on there and working it in with the abrasive side of the pad. And then let it soak and just keep going over it a few times. And before you know it, it's going to look pretty dope. And it'll be clean. The other thing that's cool about these calibers for Subaru is that these actually work on my 04 Forester too. So the plan is these are definitely going on the 98 two-door coupe. But I should actually get another set of these for my 2004 Forester XT. And I've got my 93 Legacy. It's a first generation Legacy. And I'm pretty sure that these calibers are both on that car too. So eventually I'd like to have a set of these fixed calibers on all of my Subarus. And I actually have a fourth Subaru right now. I have a 94 Subaru that's a GF body. That's a GC body, but the hatchback four-door. Now I didn't mention it, but I actually got the rotors for these calibers too. So I paid 270 or 20 bucks for the guy to deliver it. So 250 and 20 for these calibers and for the rotors, which, which I think is a pretty good deal. But I don't know if I'm gonna use the rotors. They definitely need to be turned, which you can get done pretty cheap locally. Or maybe buy some new badass looking rotors from somebody like Rally Sport Direct, who I like to work with. They're one of my favorite, you know, Subaru performance parts outlets. Because they have fast shipping, great website, good customer service. I love Rick and his videos on YouTube. So I give him a little prop here and there anytime I can. Maybe someday Rally Sport Direct will be a sponsor of the YouTube channel. That would be good. I really think they should be. It's a proper partnership, I think. I buy a lot of parts from them. I actually had a little shop uh, of my retail license and I bought from them from their wholesale side. So I've already worked with them in that respect. So what do you think, Rally Sport Direct? What do you think, Rick? Or whoever else is watching from Rally Sport Direct? What about a little sponsorship for the YouTube channel? Super only, sponsored by Rally Sport Direct. All right, this is what they're looking like. I think they've cleaned up pretty good. It's a nice, bright, brilliant Subaru Red, factory powder coat red. So a little bit of hot soapy water, a little bit of dish soap, and a non-scratch pad. And these calibers are looking awesome. Man, that was look good. Can't wait to put that on the car. All right, guys, well, that's it for today. I just want to give you a quick update on these calibers, talk a little bit about a four-pot caliber, two-pot caliber, and why these fixed calibers are so much better than the sliding caliber design that most Subarus come with. I hope you enjoyed the update. Looking forward to making a video on installing these calibers on the GC Coupe right there behind me. So thanks again for checking out the video, guys. I'm Luke, this is the Subaru Only Show. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section. If you liked the video, please go ahead and give it a like. Until next time, guys, later.
are both OB1 and they went to OB2 in like 96, 97 in the US market but they stayed OB1 in the Japanese domestic market up until like the early 2000s so all the engines if you get from Japan are going to be OB1 all the way up until like the early sometime in the early 2000s I don't recall offhand so if you want to buy a JDM motor and you want to swap your JDM motor into a US model because I'm here in the United States in the US we didn't have turbo Subarus really <laughs> We had the Legacy for a couple years and the first gen Legacy, but we definitely didn't have the first gen Impreza with any turbos. We didn't get the turbo Impreza until the 2002 Bug Eye. And then I'm pretty sure, yeah, we didn't get a STI until 2004. But European market, Australian market, Japanese market, of course, they've all had the first gen Impreza with turbos and, and the STIs and the RA model and all these badass special edition models all through the early and mid 90s. So in the U.S. market, basically, <laughs> I think everybody agrees across the globe that first-generation Prezas are the best-looking Prezas, and they're the most lightweight and the best platform for any kind of motorsports application of, with a Subaru. So if you want to race a Subaru and you're in a first-generation Preza because it's a lot, one of the lightest weight platforms and the smallest platforms and it has a real good wheelbase to work with, then you got to get a turbo motor in there, and there you go. you got to start thinking about how you're going to get that turbo motor swapped in. Now, of course, there's a lot of different ways to get a triple motor swapped in a car. Companies like iWire are great for helping do the wiring and work with the ECU or get you different ECUs. You can also do standalone systems like AEM makes or Power FC, I believe, is a company used to make them back in the day for these you can still get. There's lots of options for you know engine management. And that's something we're gonna dive into at some point. Probably with the GC Coupe or any of the other ones. But the first step is to get it all legal. And to get it all legal, I gotta basically have all of the US domestic market smog equipment on, and I have to run a stock ECU map. I have to have it actually certified by a Subaru dealership that's running a factory stock map. And then I have to go to a special, you know, Bureau of Automotive Repair or, or you know, Air Resources Board station to have them inspect the vehicle and verify all the documentation, paperwork, and you know, make sure that it passes all their criteria before they'll give me actually something called a bar tag, which means that I can get this thing smogged every couple years. Because in California, you have to smog your vehicles every two years. And if you swap an engine into a vehicle, you can't get it smogged unless you go to this bar inspection station first, or the air resources inspection station, I think it is. So that's the plan with this car. Get it all legal to get inspected by the Air Resources Board. Get the bar tag so this car is totally legal and I can get it past the smog. And then uh, maybe we'll start turning it into a little bit more of a badass race car and swap a couple of different engines into it and do different things from that point forward. But that's the starting point. You gotta have that tag in your, on, your, on the chassis of the car. And then you can start swapping engines and doing all different kind of stuff and that tag is still on the chassis. But these calibers are definitely looking pretty dope. And they're gonna look insane on GC, that's for sure. 